What's up guys, Omar here, broker and CEO of Alden Mortgage and Ome Realty. So this is going to be another mortgage rate update. We're gonna talk about the 30 year mortgage backed securities. It's kind of still taking a tank. Uh, it's not doing too hot. Uh, we're gonna talk about exactly what that means. And as promised, our mortgage rate update, I'm not gonna do the one year, one month, one year thing anymore. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add on more mortgage products. And then I'm gonna do the previous day and then the current day exactly where we stand. Also gas gas vouchers are going to be going up how much is going to be who's going to be the qualifying people to go ahead and get that all dialed in and then there's something that is called the ab where is this guy at see this is what i do for you guys i go ahead and do all of this stuff so you don't have to do the research it's an all-encompassing thing but ab 1482 the california tenant protection act of 2019 it's been updated as of this year but there's certain things in here that majority of people don't know which i'm going to go ahead and do so you know as a tenant what your rights are the landlord rights exactly what you're able to do as far as you know rental prices have increased so much that you need to know exactly how much they're allowed to go ahead and increase it and uh what your rights are what are the just causes and all that other good pajazz but let's go ahead and go ahead and uh, do the mortgage rate update the mortgage rate update as far as the 30-year uh, mortgage-backed securities is still taking a really really big dump what mortgage-backed securities means is that nobody is buying the amount of debt that is in the market on the secondary market because there's you know it's just uncertainty we're at a quarter percent decrease where nobody's buying these bonds and uh, we actually had a no bid a no buy Friday which was a couple of weeks ago where nobody bought mortgage-backed securities and this was you know when the feds increased their rates but let's go ahead and go with the mortgage rate update now instead of doing five mortgaging products we're actually going to be doing quite a but uh, a but uh, quite a lot we're gonna be doing a 30-year fix a 15-year fix a 30-year jumbo a DSCR loan which is an investor loan for apartment complexes debt service covered ratios a bank statement loan an FHA 30-year a 7-6 adjustable rate mortgage SOS OFR uh, USDA 30 year that's going to be your uh, one of your zero percent down payment programs va and then a 10-6 sofr so a 30-year fix as of yesterday was at 4.85 percent today is at 4.88 percent 15-year fix will be sitting at 50 uh the 15-year fix will be sitting at 4.13 percent that is up from 4.07 percent yesterday 30-year jumbo will be sitting at 5.63 percent that is point uh from 5.50 percent yesterday DSCR loan is sitting at 8.5%, which is no change from the previous market day. Bank statement loan is up by 0.1%, 7.50%. That is uh, from yesterday at our previous market day at 7.40%. FHA 30 year will be sitting at 4.25%. That is from 4.20% previous market day. 5% on a 7.6 adjustable rate mortgage. That is from 4.75 previous market day. USDA, that is one of your 0% down payment programs, uh, loans that you have available to you. Uh, that is sitting at 4.25%. That is from previous market day of 4.20%. VA 30 year fix will be sitting at 4.88%. That is from yesterday market day of, or not yesterday, on, on Friday, 4.80%. And then the 10 6 that is going to be sitting at 5.38%. That is from 5.25% from the previous market day. Now, if you don't know what a 10-6 or a 5-6 or a 5-1 or any one of these are, it just means that your interest only for 10 years, then it gets adjusted every single six months according to the rate and the cap on your product. Now that goes for a 5 one, seven, one, 10, one. Anytime you see the first number is going to be the total amount of years, then the second one is either going to be the month or the years. Now you have the five one, which is every single year gets adjusted to the rate and the cap on your product. And then the six is going to be every six months, it will get adjusted from the rate and cap on your product. Now there is two different times, the two different types of adjustable rate mortgages that there are out there. One is the SOFR, and then the other one is a LIBOR, which I will go ahead and make a different video on that one because this is that's going to require some time to go ahead and, and, and explain the details of that uh, but those are going to be your mortgage rate updates as of 6 27 2022 now we're anticipating that it's going to be going up a little bit more so um that's going to be that now let's go ahead and get the shameless plug out of the way for up to 50 percent commission rebate or any of these mortgage products and much more if you are interested link in the description below and for zero percent listing on selling your current home link in the description below now 
what we're gonna go ahead and do is that there's going to be a, another stimulus package that's gonna be, uh, you know, dished out to the California residents. Now, I am totally against any type of, any more stimulus that is going to be going on. I, I don't agree with it. I just don't understand it because in essence, what happens is that they made a mistake and in order to co counter that mistake, they're gonna go ahead and try to bring more stimulus and make more money from God knows where. And then they're gonna go ahead and give it to all of us. I'm totally against it because eventually, and this is the only reason why I'm against it, okay? eventually you're gonna have to pay the piper. You're gonna have to go ahead and pay this money back. So it's not like they just all miraculously all of a sudden came up with a bunch of money and ah, now we're just gonna go ahead and give it back to you because we're such nice people. No, that's not how it works. So what it's gonna happen is just the same way that we, uh, from that COVID, catastrophe that happened where the feds decreased interest rates so much then we you know they're giving the hemorrhaging money out there with the pandemic unemployment and unemployment with a bunch of different people and now they did it for so long that they increased the debt the balance sheet the debt on the balance sheet so much that now they have to go ahead and increase rates that's why rates have just gone so high in over what 15 years these are the highest rates we've had but whatever so Californians now, I don't know every single state. I'm just gonna go ahead and talk to California because I'm not really sure exactly what every other state does, but California is with incomes above $250,000 for an individual, so that's just one person. And for $500,000, joint filers will not be receiving any rebate. So if you make that much money, well, chances are you really don't need that the rebate. I'm not getting no goddamn rebate. The relief package will also include $1.1 billion in aid for recipients of supplemental social security and Cal or CalWORKs. The plan recognizes that you know it's it people are hurting more than others, gives them a greater relief. So you know I'm all for helping people that need a little bit of extra help, but is this going to be helping those people out? No, when you go and you get your paycheck, which is not gonna be that much if you're making, you know, 50, 60, 70, the average total income in the United States is $62,000, California is not much more. If you're not making that much, eventually when you see your taxes start increasing and your pay take home is going to decrease, that's gonna be, this is not fun for you, I promise, it will not be fun. Now, under the tax rebate plan, households that uh, making as much as $75,000 for individuals or $150,000 that are joint filers would receive $350 per taxpayer plus an additional $350 if they have at least one dependent. So a single parent would receive 700 bucks and two parent families would receive $1,050. That's the max. You can't go over 1,050. That's gonna be for anybody. The amount would decrease to $250 per taxpayer for households making as much as $125,000 for individuals and or $250,000 and or below for joint filers and $200 per taxpayer household making as much as $250,000 for individuals or fi uh, for individuals or $500,000 for in uh, joint filers. And both of these tiers, parents would receive $250 or $200 respectively if they have at least one dependent. Now, Governor Gavin Newsom, he's not, let's just face it, he's as popular here in the state of California as like, you know, Biden is to the whole entire United States. Nobody really likes the guy, it's just, the, every single, I can't go to a supermarket or anywhere without this guy trying to, you know, just go ahead and recall Newsom. Let's go ahead and recall this guy. Let's recall this guy. Everywhere you go, they wanna go ahead and recall him. He just hasn't, been in the best driver's seat as far as you know economics go. Uh, the three-tier program would benefit an estimated 23 million California taxpayers, including individual filers making as much as $250,000 and joint filers making as much as $500,000 with low and middle income households set to receive incremental more money. The $9.5 billion in tax refunds, which CalMatters reported Friday, is part of a $12 billion relief plan that is central to a broader $300 billion budget deal that state leaders announced Sunday night. I don't know what they're doing. I don't know what's going on. I'm not sure where all this money is coming from. We just don't miraculously just, I, whatever. So that's gonna be as far as the gas rebates that are going to be coming along and who's going to be getting it. Now there's this other thing, now I think this one is actually more important for 
renters, especially I have a lot of buddies that are renting, friends that are renting, and, and they always call, they're like, hey, my apartment complex is, is, is increasing my total rent this much. My rent apartment complex, my landlord is increasing with this one. Well, there's a AB 482, the California Tenant Protection Act of 2019. Now, these are going to be units that are exempt from both just cause regulations and rent cap limitations. Units that were constructed within the last 15 years, this applies on a rolling basis, okay? So it just means that it keeps going on and units constructed on January 1st, 2006 is not covered as of January 1st, 2020, but is covered after January 1st, 2021. Units restricted by deed, regulatory restrictions and other documented limitations, affordability to low or moderate income households. Certain dormitories will go ahead and be exempt a two unit property provided the second unit was occupied by the owner. So if like you have a landlord that is like your neighbor and they're renting one of those duplexes out or a fourplex or a threeplex, whatever it is, that is going to be exempt. Single family homes and condominiums are only exempt if both A and or B of the following do apply. The property is not owned by one of the following, a real estate trust, a corporation or an LLC with at least one cooperating member or corporate member. And then B, the landlord notified the tenant in writing, so they have to notify you in writing that the tenancy is subject to just cause. And the rent increase limitations are specifically described in the civil sections as follows. The limitations exemptions for single family homes does not apply where there is more than one dwelling unit on the same lot or any second residential unit in the building that cannot be sold separately from a subject unit, such as in law unit. There are provisions to this AB 1482. The eviction provisions, which is the main thing a lot of people want to go ahead and know, only apply after all tenants have lived in the unit for at least 12 months or more. So if you have not completed your one year t uh, lease term, which a lot of people, whenever you go ahead and get into a, a lease agreement, it's going to be at least a year. Those provisions will only apply to you if you concluded your 12 months and or more. So if you're from like, let's say your January 1st until and your final day is December 31st. Well, that is not going to be 12 month term. Just so you know, it will not be 12 month term. It would have to go past that 12 months. It would have to conclude one total calendar year or where at least one tenant has occupied the unit for at least 24 months. A tenancy may not be terminated unless the landlord has one of the allowable just cause reasons, which must be stated in the notice terminating tenancy. Just cause reasons are categorized as at fault reasons or no at fault reasons. Relocation assistance is required for no fault reason evictions. Now, what does this mean? Now, this just cause is just it really, honestly, this AB 1482 is not really gonna help most of you guys out. Let's just face it, it's just not going to because the key word in all of this is going to be just cause. Anybody in this entire world, if you, I don't know, you could be, you're watching this right now, you could find a just cause to go ahead and get somebody out. I don't care what it is. Ah, they threw a cigarette butt outside of the thing. You don't even have to smoke, but they could just use that as a just cause. It could be your neighbors. If anybody had an HOA, a homeowner's association, you know, sometimes your neighbor does something or somebody does something and then you end up, you know, you're, you're gonna have to go, they're gonna, they're gonna fine you. And then you have to dispute it, but whatever. If you have no fault evictions, a no fault just means that they don't wanna renew your lease, they wanna get you out. They say, you know what, here's your notice, get the hell out. Well, then you're gonna have to go ahead and get some relocation assistance. The mere expiration of a lease or rental agreement is not just cause to terminate a tenancy, but they can decide not to renew your tenancy and then put you on a month to month at a market rate. So that's a really, really key point to understand. Rent increases, now this is the main part, rent increases under AB 1483 or 82. Now, whenever your one year lease comes up, this is when you're gonna wanna know, majority of people who are in uh, apartments, you're gonna, at the end of your lease term, if you wanna re-sign another lease, you are gonna go uh, get a rent increase. Majority of the time you do, if you have a landlord that is not really doing that, that's awesome, but majority of people do. For covered units, annual rent increases are limited to no more than 5% 
plus the percentage change in cost of living for the region in which the property is located or 10% whichever is lower. So what that really essentially means is that everybody is going to hit every single person at the 10%. It just is what it is. They can't. They have to justify the other cause, which is really easy to go ahead and do. As a landlord myself, as a mortgage broker, as a real estate broker, this is my job. This is what I do for a living. It's not a difficult thing to do. It happens all over the place. Now, what that means is that this is going to be the percentage change in cost of living, which means that the consumer price index for all urban consumers for all items for the metropolitan areas in which the property is located, as published by the uh, Labor of Statistics, the United States Bureau of Labor and Statistics, is regionally indexed and is not available. The CPI index for all urban consumers for all items are determined by the Department of Industrial Relations and they shall apply with, I'll go ahead and put the link below for rent increases that take effect before August 1st of any year, any calendar year the percentage change is calculated using the amount published for April so it's always lagging one month or March if no amount is published for April of immediate proceedings calendar year and April of two uh, or March of the year before that for rent increases that take effect on uh, or after August 1st of any calendar year, the percentage change is calculated using the amount published for April or March if no amount is published for the April. The percentage change must be rounded to the nearest one-tenth of one percent. No more than two increases in the 12-month period and combined amount cannot exceed the 5% plus the CPI cap, which in essence just go ahead and say that it's going to be 10%. So let's say for instance you go ahead and re-sign a lease. You don't want to do the year lease, you do a six-month lease. Well, they could go ahead and increase it at the end of the six months and then they could increase it again at the end of the other six months, respectively, if you go ahead and do that. Now I'm not going to go ahead and go with the numbers, but let's go ahead and see uh, what kind of notices, because this is another important thing, okay? You need to know exactly what notices are supposed to be served to you. That's another really important thing. All tenants and units covered by the state law must receive a notice explaining the just cause. Now whenever you get this just cause, you have the right to go ahead and appeal it. But this also means that you have to go ahead and take them to court and then you have to go ahead and fight this just cause or if you're gonna go through an eviction process, that's going to be another thing. Now you can get sued. Just so you know, you can get sued for this. So if they find a just cause and then you end up taking them to civil court and saying that there was no just cause because they don't agree with the just cause their reason for just cause, uh, they, they feel that they're in the right and you feel like you're in the right, well, you're gonna have to go ahead and take them to court and if you lose, they will go ahead and ding you for court costs, they will go ahead and, you know, then the just cause is validated by courts and, and, it's, and then they could possibly go ahead and evict you and then put an eviction on your record. So just know that that is a possibility. For, for a tenancy, Existing prior to July 1st, 2020, the notice must be provided in writing to the tenant no later than August 1st. So there's a 30 day or a month uh, leeway on that. Or as an addendum to the lease or rental agreement. For any tenancy commenced or renewed on or July 1st, 2020, the notice must be provided as an addendum to the lease or rental agreement or as a written notice signed by the tenant with a copy provided to the tenant. The notice language must read, now this is very important because if it doesn't read it just the way that it is, then this notice is completely null and void. California law limits the amount your rent can be increased. See section 1947.12 of the Civil Code for more information. California law also provides that after all of the tenants have continuously and lawfully uh, occupied the property for 12 months or more, or at least one of the tenants has continuously and lawfully occupied the property for 24 months or more, a landlord must provide a statement of cause in any notice to terminate a tenancy. See section 1946.2 of civil co code for more information. Now this is something very important. Now that what I just read, if your notice does not state that and it does not give the just cause and everything is not because whenever you go to eviction court if every all your t's aren't crossed and all your i's aren't dotted then it's just shit it doesn't mean anything and you're just you know you're gonna eventually win 
uh, landlords are getting really good at this ever since this eviction moratorium bullshit that just happened it just ruined a lot of landlords were being extra cautious about everything that we're supposed to put and every single addendum whether it be you know terminating your tenancy or just not renewing your lease you're going to market rate all that other stuff we're being very very meticulous of that in addition an owner claiming an exemption from the law because the property is a single family home or a condominium must provide a written notice to the tenant for a tenancy existing before July 1st 2020 this notice may be not but is not required to be provided in the rental agreement for any tenancy commence or renewed or July after July 1st 2020 this notice must be provided in the rental agreement if the owner does not provide the required notice then a single family home or condominium is not exempt from the just cause or rent cap regulations the notice language must read as follows. This is something else that's very important. These are the verbiages that is required to be in, in every single one of these notices. The property is not subject to rent limits imposed by section 1947.12 of the civil code and is not subject to just cause requirements of section 1946.2 of civil code. This property meets the requirements of section 1947.12 D5, section D5, and 1946.2 section E, uh, eight of civil code and the owner is not any of the following a uh, real estate investment trust or defined by section 856 of the internal internal revenue code a corporation number three a limited liability company in which at least one member is a corporation so that is going to be the rights that you have as a landlord the rights that you have as the renter these are things that you should know these are things that are going to be very much required in every one of them you have to be very very detailed with all of this so like i said in every single video let me beat your big bank. If you are in the process of getting a mortgage with anybody, add, add us onto your lender list. We'd be more than happy to go ahead and try to compete with any of those guys. Let us try to beat your big bank for any mortgaging assistance. 0% listing your current home or 50% commission rebate because God knows everybody's gonna need a little bit of rebate whenever you're purchasing your next home because that down payment is a bitch. Link in the description below. Until next video, guys, I really appreciate you watching. Like, subscribe, comment, all that other stuff. Share it to your friends, share it to somebody might be helping somebody out. Peace!